All right, well, welcome to the St. Swithin's virtual service. Um, this will be, would ideally, this would be live, and um, so that we could see uh, when people uh, log in. Oh, hi, Paul, I see you've logged in. And uh, hi, Roger, and uh, oh, Jenny, you've logged in as well. And uh, so uh, it would uh, be kind of dynamic, and uh, you would feel like you're actually here because, oh, <laughs> Leighton. So Leighton's logged in. Hello, hello, Leighton. How are you? So uh, we would keep it kind of, uh, you know, very uh, like we're here at the uh, door greeting people, um, but we're virtually greeting people. And you would, um, oh, it's James. James, good to see you. I hope, uh, I hope uh, you and the family are uh, keeping safe in all of this madness. And so it was. It's because of all the madness, the COVID madness, that we are having a St. Swithin's virtual service uh, because you know what we may not be able to meet together in person but we will meet together in spirit and uh, we will praise God whether we are in the same physical location or whether we are in various different locations and you know what God is eternal anyway so whether we are staggered or uh, you know it, it happens instantaneously we can be agreeing with each other in prayer for healing for protection, that God will be glorified through this in some way, in multiple ways, uh, through turning people to faith, through keeping Christians safe, through um, healing people who call on his name, and uh, through, um, who knows, who knows. The, the wisdom of God passes all understanding, and his ways are not our ways, his time is not our time. His, uh, his plans are not our plans. And it's, up, it's actually up to us to align our will with him. We pray in the, in the Lord's Prayer, let thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Not my will, thy will. And so I want to agree with God with whatever he's doing, turning us upside down, you know, changing our world, reducing our capacity to think we're in control so that we turn our eyes to our creator, the one who created every cell in our bodies, the one who, who perpetuates the breath in our lungs, the one who, who causes the, 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 the light, who causes darkness, who causes all there is to be. I want to align my will with God. And so I'm going to pray. I was going to do a faux prayer, but I'm actually going to really pray. I'm going to pray for our nation. I'm going to pray for our church. And why don't you join me? I know this is, I'm just doing this as a, a dummy thing, but you know what? I'm going to actually pray for St. Swithin's and for his kingdom and for everybody in this church. So in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for, for the hands that went into building every stone. And, and for the, 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 the blood, sweat and tears that have been poured into people, into, into caring for people, into loving people, into providing food for people, into smiling at strangers, at the friendships that have been forged over the, over the generations that this church has been here. And the dedication, the, the servant-hearted obedience that so many souls who have walked in this door have had in seeking your will and seeking you first and seeking your kingdom to be glory, to be, to be enhanced, built, glorified and perpetuated. God, you're, 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 you're mind-blowing in your genius, in your creative capacity, in your ability to love, in your ability to care. We are created in the image of you, God, but we are just a, we're just a fraction. We're just a fraction of... of of, of what you're capable of. We love because we, we, you first loved us and we're created in your image, but your love is just, just overwhelmingly incredible. And so we put our lives, we put our trust in you. We put our health in your capable hands, God, as the architect of life, as the author of health. And I pray for protection over every single person that's walked in this door over the choir that sang, over the, over the people that, 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 that are gathered here, over every, every single person watching God, that you would, you would protect them from fear, from loneliness, from anxiety, from worry, and from, this, from disease. 
from this disease. Protect us as a church, God, from the disease. If one of us gets sick, heal them in the name of Jesus. And not just COVID-19, God, but the, the, the other illnesses that, that still keep going. Cancer. Flu. Uh, back problems. MS. Whatever it is. God, we need you. We need your healing power. So we repent, God, for being anxious. We repent for worrying because you say, let the worries of today be enough for today. Be not anxious for anything. And help us to, to, to look at the sparrows and the lilies of the field and see how much you provide for them. And, 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 and God, and help us to believe that you will provide for us in this time of economic uncertainty. When, when, when some of us are losing jobs and we, and, and we don't know how we will survive for the next six months. God, I trust your provision and I pray that as a country we will be able to come together and find a way to care for each other and perpetuate this culture that you have built. In Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen. All right. So that's the welcome. <laughs> welcome. Um, how are we doing for time? Six minutes? All right. So we're, um, why don't we have a hymn? Why don't we, um, why don't we uh, sing a hymn? So the choir were so kind as to um, consent to uh, recording their rehearsal the other night. And it's a beautiful, uh, Holy Spirit filled representation of the grace and peace. The grace and peace and love of Jesus. And for me, I was in tears when I was here recording it. Uh, and uh, just at seeing the, these beautiful people filled with with the love of God and so I hope that it blesses you and uh, we um, I will uh, I think we will put some words up as well so that you can sing along um, or just listen or just pray so um, here is hymn number one
The Gospel reading today comes from Mark chapter 10, verse 17 to 23. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud. Honour your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these things I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. All right, and well, and uh, thank you for the Bible reading. And now we would uh, cut back to the um, service leader. And we are going to have a time of confession and absolution. So, um, in line with what I was saying before, why don't we have, why don't we actually um, confess feeling anxious and worrisome and uh, concerned that, um, you know, perhaps God is not in control. Well, let, let's lead a confession. Lord God, let's have a confession. Lord God, I confess, and anyone who agrees with me confesses, uh, that I have not taken you at your word to not be anxious. I have not taken you at your word that, the, that you care for the sparrows and the lilies of the field. And I have been worried about tomorrow. I've been worried about paying rent. I've been worried about work. We have been worried. We have, as a culture, we have been attacking each other and cutting each other down for incorrect responses and for being too slow or too quick, for not doing things the way that we want them to be done. We have made decisions out of fear. We have made decisions that are, are, have no regard for our neighbour. We have stockpiled resources. We have not been generous in, 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 in our time, with our money, with letting other people go first. Forgive us. Forgive us as a country, God. Forgive us as a society for getting so caught up in material belongings, trusting in insurance policies, trusting in, in job security, trusting in the, the physical wealth of this incredible country. We have become complacent because of how much we have, how much you've blessed us with. You've allowed us to conquer viruses and bacteria and certain illnesses. You've allowed us to prolong life through, through medical advances that, that, with the brains that you've given us, building on, on the discoveries of those before us. And we confess that we have not put you first, we have not trusted you first, we have not given you what is due to be yours. And if there's the slightest chance, God, that this virus is a is, is divine wrath or discipline, then, Father, we fall before you in repentant apology. Also for the way that we have, have, have treated animals. That this virus is meant to have come from the mistreatment of animals, and we perpetuate that. These, these beautiful creatures that you, 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 you created us to... to care for and, and preside over and we've abused them we exploit them in, but without regard for, for them as being living creatures and so if this is the result of just our mismanagement of the planet 
or if it's discipline. God, we, 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 we humbly come before you and apologise. And we accept your correction, if that's what, what this is. But regardless of, of whether it's correction or whether it's you opening doors, God, we, we repent for not trusting and for being anxious and being afraid and, and falling apart because the, 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 the structures that we have built based on our own strength and our own understanding are falling away. Hear our prayer, Lord God. Hear our prayer. Amen. So if that resonated with you, if uh, you agree, here's the thing. Is there is absolute forgiveness in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You are loved at your worst. We are loved at our worst. At our most miserable, anxious, weak of faith selves. The saviour of the world has died for us in our place and taken everything that we deserve. So that is great news. That means we can live without the weight of condemnation. That means we can live without self-loathing. We can walk in grace. We can walk in, 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 in God's love. So... We are forgiven. So let us sing. Let us sing to the God that has saved our souls. To the God that has died and risen again. In the person of Jesus Christ. And let us praise his name with everything we have. If you're at home and you're able to sing, sing. Let it out. You're at home. Crank this up on a stereo and, and just and let it out. Because there is power. There is power when we, when we release, when we just sing to Jesus. It stirs up something in our souls. And the, the key thing is to sing before we actually feel it. Right? Because the, that's the beautiful thing about, about singing and why, it, why it's so wonderful in church. Is, is it's a declaration of intent. So we may sing... God, I love you, before we're really feeling it. And then we start to feel it. We may sing, I have peace, before we have peace. But we declare it and we start, our feelings catch up. That's an amazing thing. I mean, we, you, can, you can do it with an angry song. So, how much more effective then to do it with a song that worships God, that allows us to get rid of whatever worry we have and focus on him, so that we're not focused on ourselves. So we're focused on who God is. I love doing that. This is the God that causes caused stars to form. More stars than there are grains of sand. Uncountable numbers. And yet that God loves us, and died for us, and accepts us as we are. Hallelujah. So let's, let's listen to this. Let's listen, sing, join in this next hymn.
All right. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, next reading was, but I'm going to read from Psalm 127. It's a short psalm. It was a song. Uh, it says it's the, uh, a song of ascents of Solomon, so written by um, King Solomon. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise up early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. All right, so now we come to our service, uh, our part of the service where we're going to hear from a, uh, a speaker, um, and it will be uh, Jenny. But in light of the fact that Jenny is not here right now, I'm going to, uh, to give a, a message. All right, well, hello to whoever is um, watching or listening. So, of course, uh, we live in extraordinary times. Yesterday, Australia announced a level four travel ban, the highest in, in Australia's history. And uh, no public gatherings of 100, 100 people or more. Um, of course, the US has shut its border with Canada. It's setting up, it's sending military ships to New York and and California, military hospital ships, I should say. And um, uh, the Senate has passed the aid package. Italy's still on lockdown. Belgium, I think, has gone on lockdown. I mean, everything, everything's... These are crazy times, no? This is... Uh, these are crazy, crazy times. Anyway, in response to Australia's um, restrictions, our own little... Our Anglican church, the Sydney Anglican church has cancelled all um, all meetings. Uh, sorry, all, um, all all services, weekend services. So, um, you know, look, people are scrambling. People are, uh, people are calling for the, all of Australia to be shut down, for schools to be closed. I think they... Though if they close the schools, um, who's going to take care of those kids? You know, you're pulling them people out from, from the workport. Well, you're pulling... People now have to take care of the kids, possibly grandparents, who are at most risk. And um, it's also providing a degree of normalcy for the kids to go to school in this craziness. And, and this is what I want to touch on, is that, um, you know, look, depression, mental health, um, normal diseases, cancers, all this sort of stuff, they're still going on. Like, we're all freaking out about COVID. But... Um, if depression kills you, you're just as dead from depression as you are from COVID. So the, uh, and this is where the church actually demonstrably um, helps people, is in providing community, um, mental health, purpose. Uh, it takes your mind off yourself and your own problems because you're, you're gathered together, focused on God and on each other. And um, so to deny the people, the ability to, to meet together. Um, you're weighing that up. So it's like, oh, we're not going to get COVID, but we're going to succumb to these other issues. So that's why I'm making this little, little whatever you want to call it, video thing. It's for whoever wants to hear it. I know primarily, I guess, I'm, I'm going to be speaking to, to, to Christians, but look, it's... For whoever the, the 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 wisdom of Jesus is universal. You um um anyway, this is what this is what he said in uh, as recorded in the in um, Matthew's gospel. Do not worry. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. 
Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, at a single hour to your day? And then in Philippians, uh, that's um, reinforced um, by the, the author of Philippians, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Or in Christ Jesus. Uh, so the question I've been asking myself is, um, what, would my like, what would my life look like if I lived as though Jesus were returning tomorrow? And that's not to say, oh, go and be reckless and live without uh, consequences. That's not what I mean. But rather living without the worry for things that wouldn't matter if Jesus returned tomorrow, tonight. So um, uh, how am I going to pay for my kid's education? Don't matter if if Jesus is coming back. What will happen if I catch COVID-19? Doesn't matter if Jesus is coming back. Um, what negative reactions am I going to get to this video? It doesn't matter if Jesus is coming back. So, uh, it's, it's a call to, a challenge for me to live without worry. So, as I said, not to live without consequences, but to live without uh, whatever I'm worried about. If Jesus is coming back, it really makes no difference. It's, makes no difference at all. And and maybe he doesn't come back, but maybe I get hit by a car. I'm there worried about not catching COVID or not passing on COVID to the elderly. And boom, I get hit by a car just crossing the road. So that's that thing of, um, did would worrying have added one more day to my life? Can any of you, any of you by worrying, add a single hour to your life? He goes on and he says, uh, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown in the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So my uh, my response to that as well as as asking that asking that question, what would it look like if Jesus were coming back? Is to actually repent for being anxious and for worrying. It's not that's not a, I'm not reading that as a suggestion. I read that as a as a command. If I'm following Jesus, then this is what I'm supposed to do. And if I'm not doing it, then repenting of not doing that. It, it repenting repenting. So the idea of repenting is it's not just all oh, saying you're sorry, right? Even though that's what can instigate repentance, a feeling of like, oh, I've blown it um, and regret. But repentance is actually, you know, diverting your life and, and turning around and changing course. And um, so, so repenting, so f- first up, so saying I'm sorry, apologizing for worrying and not taking, not trusting Jesus, oh ye of little faith, he said. Um, f- saying I'm sorry for, for not trusting Jesus and then, and then starting renewing my mind and actually believing him. And replacing a worry... So replacing, like it's like a positive and a negative thought. Can they exist in the same space? I don't believe. I don't believe a thankful, thankful thought and a complaint can exist in the same space. And fear and and faith, aren't, they're not. Um, they're not coexistent. And and so so worrying and and 
I mean. So I try and replace a worry or a grumble or a negative thought with a positive thought, right? So it's not just like I do do not think about this, but actually positively think about this. So if I'm going to worry about tomorrow, I'm going to trust in God. If I'm afraid for what people think, I'm going to dwell on what Jesus thinks. If I'm... Um, so it's, if there's a fear, replace it with a promise or an assurance. And... Um, or if I'm dissatisfied and complaining about the, you know, my coffee's cold, be thankful that I actually have coffee and I have milk and I have water and there's a cup that someone made and I'm wearing clothes and there's a microphone that's recording my voice and there's a computer that's storing the message and you're reading it. You're, 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 you know, there's someone else who's receiving it and I've got chewing gum here and I've got glasses, you know, it's not all blurry. So there's a gazillion things going on and I've got eyes and I've got skin and I've got a mouth and I've got a, a voice that's making sound and I've got a brain. I mean, there's a gazillion things to be thankful for that can drive out the worry. And that's right now. Right now in this moment, there are all of these beautiful things going on in your life. Just take, it, take a sec, list them. List them. The mundane things, the things that are little. Tell a blind man that, that vision isn't a big thing. Tell a paralytic that moving, just moving his fingers, quadriplegic, that moving his fingers isn't huge, isn't massive. These are massive things. And we diminish them and call, oh, let's be thankful for the little things. Man, they're huge. Being able to walk is huge. And we're not born with that. We have to, we have to fight gravity and get strong and fall down to be able to get up and run. to build the strength, and that requires opposition. And so that leads me to, 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 to this, this I, think, I think the COVID-19 and all that's going on is providing opposition that we can grow stronger through as individuals and collectively, as a church, as country, as a world. I'm looking at the, the aid package that the Americans are uh, passing, and I'm... I'm thinking that's remarkable and maybe it will change the thinking to the reality, to the realisation that caring for your neighbour's health actually is an investment in, you, in yourself. If your neighbour is sick and they infect you, you're going you're gonna to suffer. If your neighbour is sick and can't work, that affects your, they're no longer, a, you can't sell to them. We're not islands, we're, we live in a society and, and, we need each other. We need each other. We need each other and we need God. We need each other and we need God and we need God to draw our minds to the fact that we need each other and we need God. And maybe that is a silver lining in all the madness that's going on. And so I'm going to, I'm going to pray because I don't, I don't wish anyone to be sick. I don't wish for anyone to be worried or scared. That's why I'm making this video. It's like, I, this, is, this is the answer that I found. Jesus is the answer that I found. Jesus is the, is the light that keeps impending darkness from overwhelming my mind. I just want to share that. So I'm going to pray. If you, um, if you are a praying person, if you love Jesus, Feel free to pray long and agree. And if you don't, maybe you get a window into what crazy Christians do. <laughs> but I'm going to pray. Man. Dear Lord God, I love you so much. And I thank you for all that you've given. All the things that I listed, God, I'm so appreciative of and I'm so thankful for. For this moment right now. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for that you have blessed us with your presence. That you've blessed us with life, with awareness, with thinking, with being able to feel, with being able to feel fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom, the Bible says. And, 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 and so the fact that we can feel fear, God, I'm even going to thank you for that because we're alive. Our, our hearts are beating, our emotions are working. 
But I thank, that per- I thank you that, that for your promise and assurance that perfect love drives out all fear. And God, I repent and apologize for not trusting you at your word about providing, about healing us, about protecting us, about... Because every time I worry and I'm anxious, God, that that is... I've, I've given him... I've given in and I haven't trusted you and so I'm sorry. And God, I just ask for more faith. I ask for, for, for whoever has listened and up to this point, God, that you would just give them a little more faith. A little more faith. Jesus, give them a little more faith, please. I'm going to ask for protection, God, over... over um, <laughs> I want to be so bold as to... You know, ask for protection for the world, but I'm going to start with whoever is watching this video, God, that you that they can agree with me. Protect them from this virus, and if they're going to get the virus, then God give them healing. Let them recover without permanent damage to their lungs. Shield their family and loved ones. I pray for our society, Jesus. People are worried about losing work, about not paying rent, and I I thank you for the way that we are as a society creatively coming up with solutions. And I pray that you would inspire, that you would speak to people who are listening to you and calling on your name with solutions. With solutions for mental health, with solutions for providing for people, with solutions for... Um, uh, making sure there is enough care for those who do get sick. Jesus, you you walked around and you laid hands on the sick and you just said, "Be healed." And even and the apostles did that. And we see, I've seen people here. I've seen you've healed me radically and quickly. And so, God, I, I pray for an increase in faith in your healing power amongst people who believe in you that we would be able to pray for each other and see radical healing. In the name of Jesus, I pray these things. All right, well, um, now you know what would be nice to do is actually to, um, um, I'm not an ordained Anglican minister, so I can't ordain an Anglican communion. However, why don't we as a people, as a, just a bunch of Christian people, why don't we, um, Jesus said, um, do this in remembrance of me when he broke the bread and when he took the cup, uh, that the, the, the bread represented his uh, body that was broken and poured out for all humanity. And the blood represented his blood that was shed for the forgiveness of sins. So, um, I don't have any bread and bread and and, uh, and wine here, but um, why don't we um, break bread together? Grab something, some food, and let us just um, eat together and do so. Eat, remembering our Savior, the one we follow, the one we we have invited to live with us and in us and to work through us. Why don't we partake together? So...
storm Oh Jesus You are my rock In shifting sands Oh Jesus You are my strength when I am weak oh, 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 Jesus You're everything I need I need It's in you Oh God, you are my salvation Trust in you, trust in you, I'll 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 trust in you. All right, and uh, so I hope you have, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, virtual service. Um, Roger and Paul, I hope you've enjoyed this example of what a virtual service could look like. Uh, if anyone beyond Roger and Paul see this, I hope you enjoy um, this next hymn. We are going to close with a third hymn from our beautiful choristers. Uh, um, Philip Lindquist is the uh, choir director and he is a um, very gifted man, gifted singer, and uh, I appreciate the work that he has put in. And uh, anyway, here is the beautiful Pimble Choir, or 16 members of the beautiful Pimble Choir to, uh, to take us home. So may God bless you wherever you are and whatever you're doing and whenever you find yourself and whenever you find yourself. Whenever you find yourself. I don't know. Maybe this is... Maybe this will reach you in some years. I, don't, I have no idea. No idea. So, whenever you are, wherever you are, whoever you are, may the love of God, may the grace of Jesus and may the power of the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen. Amen.